us for prayer. <clears throat> Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. Loving God, we approach you this another Lord's Day with grateful hearts and hearts that are also hungry, ready, and willing to do your will. We pray that you would lead us yet again in another act of worship, that our worship will be found acceptable before you. We pray, dear God, that you would take us and continue your transforming work in us and through us. May we seek only your glory. And so we give ourselves to you. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. You are the potter and we are the clay. In Jesus' name. Amen. The introite hymn, number 392. 392.
Christ be praised with his eternal song through ages on and on, which is us Christ be praised. A word of welcome is extended to all of you to this act of worship. Special welcome to any and all visitors sharing with us this morning. We also acknowledge the presence of those who share with us via Facebook live stream. Our readings and collect today are for proper 21. Proper 21. The collect is on page 179. Page 179. We can mark that page. We will return to it shortly. After the collect for the day, we will have a second collect, the collect for St. Michael and all angels. And that's on page 189. Page 189. So we mark that page as well. And we return to it shortly. We continue our worship on page 100. Page 100. The first of the sentences, therefore, I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We turn now to our hymn books, number 382, our song of praise, 382. Join all cheerful songs with angels round the throne. Ten thousand thousand are their tongues at all their joys are one. Worthy the Lamb that died, they cry to be exalted. Worthy the Lamb, all lips reply, for he was slain for us. 
Jesus is worthy to receive honor and body divine and blessings more than we can give be Lord forever thine. Let all creation join in one to bless the sacred name of him that sits upon the throne and to adore the Lamb. We turn now to our colleagues, page 179, followed by page 189. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become the partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. St. Michael and all angels, everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministries of angels and mortals. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may help and defend us here on earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the word. First reading is taken from the book of Exodus chapter 17, reading verses 1 to 7. From the wilderness of sins, the, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rehem, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you, why do you test the Lord? But the people thirst there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and the livestock without th thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are most ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horebim. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the, in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed, 
Psalm 78, Psalm 78, verses 1 to 4 and 12 to 16. Page 566, page 566. Verses, Psalm 78, verses 1 to 4 and 12 through 16. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He brought streams out of the cliff and the waters gushed out like rivers. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Please sit for the second reading. A reading from the Word of God written in Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who Though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore. God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. The hymn for the gradual, number 471, 471. Yeah. 
with faith and hope, so shall thy work be done. Come in thy grace to him, thy works into his hands, and rest on his unchanging word, O heaven and earth commands. Though years on years roll on, his covenant shall be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew the 21st chapter beginning at the 23rd verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. When Jesus entered the temple the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority Jesus said to them I will also ask you one question if you tell me the answer then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So. They answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you for John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him but the tax collectors and the prostitutes 
believed him and even after you saw it you did not change your minds and believe him this is the gospel of Christ Let us pray. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit and make us holy, giving us thoughts that lead to prayer, prayer that leads to love, and love that leads to life in you forever. Amen. Please be seated. Matthew chapter 21 verse 32 Matthew 21 verse 32 for John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him and even after you saw it you did not change your minds and believe him even after you saw it you did not change your minds and believe him. Jesus is teaching and preaching. He is healing and casting out demons. He is performing his ministry. He is doing all that he has been called by God to do. And so on this particular occasion, he is in the temple teaching. And the challenge it would seem or the problem Jesus has not received permission from the religious authorities to do any of the things that he is doing usually when we read of the various encounters that Jesus has in the scriptures in the gospels we hear about the scribes and the Pharisees, the Sadducees, some individual. But on this particular occasion, it is the authorities themselves. And this is what makes it, and, and should pique our interest, and makes it so important. Those in authority, the chief priests themselves and the elders, they now approach Jesus. We, we, in some instances we read of the chief priests sending people to question or to look on or to find out what's going on but here now they come they come themselves so they have a serious issue or serious concern about authority they are it as it were they are the ones in charge so this chap has been up and down all over the place saying things doing things and up to now he hasn't even sat down to have a meeting with us so they see Jesus as a threat to their authority because it's not just that he's speaking and doing things but he's having an impact an effect is taking place so they come and they ask the question by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority for Jesus it is not a matter of simply stating that God gave me the authority I can just imagine if Jesus were to answer and say that his authority comes from God the next comment or the next question would have been well how do we know that God gave you this authority and it would have just gone on and on and on Jesus chooses to answer 
with a question. He questions them about the origins of John's baptism by asking if John's baptism was from God or if John made it up himself. Jesus was pushing the authorities to examine themselves. From Jesus's perspective, the issue is not about authority. It's about our willingness to change. That is the issue that Jesus recognizes. And that is in fact the issue for the chief priests and the elders. It's about who is in charge. So he says, Jesus that is, for John came to you in the way of righteousness. Understand that. He came to you in the way. His whole approach, his demeanor, the manner John went about his ministry and his baptism. He came to you in the way of righteousness. And you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. That is the message in the gospel. Even after you saw it, even after you heard the message for yourself, even after you saw what was happening, even after you've had that experience, you did not change your minds and believe him. People in authority, <clears throat> amendment, some people in authority are slow to change. Some people in authority slip into seeing change as something for all those they are in charge of. And I oftentimes find it difficult to recognize that the change needs to take here instead of, or here also with me who is in charge. The chief priests and the elders had no sight or vision for themselves. The problem had to be elsewhere. So when the chief priests and elders are questioned about where John gets the authority to perform his baptisms, they discuss privately and they realize they have dug a hole for themselves. Whichever way they answer, they're going to be in trouble. If they say it is from God, they're going to look like hypocrites. Because how can you say that this thing is from God and you're not believing him? If they say it's, it's, it's something made up by John himself, as it said, they are afraid of the crowds. Because everybody knows John is a prophet from God. So rather than giving an answer to make themselves look silly, they say we don't know. It's a ploy that a lot of us use at times. When we're in a good argument or discussion and we realize that we are backed into a corner based on the answer we give. We say, well, I don't know. Or I ain't answering that. So they were backed into a corner. And Jesus, to reinforce the message that they refuse to change their minds, Jesus, <clears throat> he presents them, <clears throat> excuse me, presents a parable. And he questions them, about the, the obedience of two sons. Two sons are instructed to go into the father's vineyard. The first son says he will not go, but later he changes his mind and he goes. The second son says that he will go, but he never shows up. The first son did the will of his father. The first son changed his mind. Even in the face of righteousness, the chief priests and elders refused to believe that God was at work. Why? Because the person who was performing the works did not receive their permission. So therefore, it could not be from God. Prostitutes and tax collectors 
who recognized God at work and who were responding to the message of John Jesus says they were therefore responding to God and are now entering the kingdom ahead of you so while those in authority remain stubborn the people who do not measure up to their standards are entering the kingdom that the chief priests and the elders want for themselves we come back to that nagging word that never seems to go away change all of this about change the willingness to change and here Jesus not he's not only confronting the chief priests and elders but as he speaks to us today and think about it even when we are confronted with righteousness even when persons are doing their best as guided by God because we are not in favor cannot or we refuse to recognize how God is working and more and more scripture continues to show how God goes outside of the box to use people and situations that we would not normally expect in order to get our attention Righteousness is a reality. COVID-19 is also a reality. Violence, immorality, immorality in all of its different expressions. They're all realities and they all confront us at some point in our lives. Right now, COVID has this sway, so to speak. So, does COVID have authority over our lives? Who gave COVID authority? The point is, COVID is a reality. Face the reality. Don't look for issues or create issues where there are really none. It's not about the authority. It's about the reality. Here, you're confronted with John and his righteousness. Now we have COVID and its deadliness and uh, <clears throat> there are persons who still believe that wearing a mask washing and sanitizing and distancing waste of time just a bother whenever we have to consider change the underlying um, understanding and message is that there is a reality to be acknowledged and the refusal to change is always always especially if we talk about change for the good refusing to change is about refusing to acknowledge reality we don't want to face up to what is in front of us and so we can find everything else to throw up in the air to create a smoke screen or a distraction the chief priests and the elders were confronted with righteousness they chose rather to concern themselves with authority if change is going to become a comfortable word in our lives in our vocabulary in our daily living change for the better talking about change for the better we have to come to terms with the different realities that face us from day to day we don't deal with reality by denying it that's just living in denial so as good Christians we are reminded today that we are called by God yes into a loving relationship but a loving relationship that requires change let us not look for issues unnecessary issues to throw up in the air the reality 
of the righteousness of John better yet the righteousness of Jesus is before us will we acknowledge it will we acknowledge him will we make the change the changes where we need to let us pray that God's grace will so enable us to accept change and thus become who God wants us to be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit We respond now to God's word, page 104, page 104. We stand and we recite the Nicene Creed, page 104. Shall we stand please? We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come amen our intercessory prayers form C page 108 form C and as we offer our prayers to Almighty God we thank him for his continued mercies towards us we thank him for the opportunities to draw closer to him opportunities to make changes in our lives so that we can have a better and stronger relationship with him we pray this morning remembering all who have asked us to pray for them all who have requested the prayers of the church we pray for God's hand in their lives Lord in your mercy we pray remembering especially those who grieve over the death of their loved ones pray for the families of Patricia Phillip Viola Gums Stedroy Delaney Evelyn Thompson Cuthbert Brown we also remember to pray this morning for our sister uh, Perline Elms over the death of our husband Pray for the family and for all others who mourn his death. Lord, in your mercy. We continue with form C. With all our hearts and all our minds, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and all ministers of God, word and sacraments, that they may be filled with the truth and love, and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders, for the leaders of all nations, and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who call us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us also remember uh, to pray for St. Michael's School in Antigua, our last remaining Anglican school in our, in our diocese. We pray for all of the challenges that they currently face as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Pray for all of the staff, the teachers, all the students, administrators of the school. We pray for any other institution or church named after St. Michael. Remember St. Michael's Cathedral in Barbados. Pray for the Dean, Dean Jeffrey, and all the people there. Lord, in your mercy. We pray together. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O Lord of love, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Page 123, page 123. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry for our son. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ, by the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, and have all been made to drink of the one Spirit. Peace of the Lord be always with you.
that is share the peace of God. We now sing the hymn number 559, number 559 from our hymn books.
turn to our prayer books, page 126, page 126. As we offer our gifts, those of us who are able, could we stand please? We stand to present our gifts and ourselves to Almighty God. Those of us who are able. Prayer B, page 126. Page 126. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us. This bread, this wine, this money. With them, we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father Almighty, everlasting God. Page 131. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Let us sit or kneel, page 137, page 137. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Therefore, Father, according to his command, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation the head of the church and the author of our salvation by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Page 144. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Lord God, hear the prayers of your people who call upon you. Be merciful to us and bless us, O God. Regard not our sins but remember your love for us. Amen. Our hymns for the receiving of the sacrament uh, will run as, as printed, 596, 598, 
607 and 599. Please remember, as we prepare for receiving the sacrament, we begin with the section in front of the lectern, the section in front of the lectern on my left, then we'll have the section in front of the pulpit, then we'll go to the northern section, and then we'll come back to the south. So please uh, follow the ushers' um, guidance. The hymn now, number five, five, nine, six.
248, page 148. We pray together the second prayer on that page, the second prayer. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all the persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shall we bow our heads? Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We extend words of greeting and welcome once again to all of you. I want to just acknowledge and welcome our former Governor General, Sir Lawrence. Happy to have you here with us. Uh, do we have any first time worshippers? First time worshippers? If so, if you care to stand, we would love to acknowledge your presence. No? Okay. Do we have any? celebrants this week, um, birthdays, anniversaries, or any special um, occasion. We've got two. Right. We have birthday girls and boys, and we have one um, anniversary being celebrated. <clears throat> Let us pray. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercies without end. We give you thanks this week, today, for these, your sons and daughters, who celebrate another year of life, another birthday. Lord, we thank you that you have been merciful to them over the past year. As we lift them up now and as we commend them to you, we ask that you would hold them fast and that you would reassure them of your love for them and of your presence with them. Lord, we pray that they would grow not only in age, but that they would grow in your love, in your grace, in your favor. So keep them always close to you and may they strive daily to follow your will in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the couple. Lord God, we thank you for this couple as they celebrate another year of their marriage. We thank you for having brought them this far. And we know, God, you have brought them this far for a purpose. So, Lord, Lord, we ask that you would show your blessings upon them, that you would help to renew and to strengthen their love for each other and their love for you. We pray your blessings upon their home, upon their family. Keep them always close to you. And may they desire day by day, year by year, 
to love you more and to please you more. Keep them committed to you and to each other. And may they be a sign, a source of encouragement and inspiration to other couples to follow the way of Christ. These mercies we pray and ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God's blessings upon all of you. Enjoy your special day and do have a wonderful week. Okay? You give them a hand. Okay. Okay. God's blessings. Okay. Sister, today, um, So we are saying, uh, <clears throat> um, Sister Yvonne, um, I like to pay attention to the young ones. Sister Yvonne is celebrating her 84th birthday. So we give, give <laughs> and our sister um, Hyacinth, yes, Cynthia, Cynthia, um, celebrating nine. Zero. Nine zero. And she is looking that she's walking well. God's blessings. Okay, have a wonderful day. Okay, God bless you. Okay, so do enjoy your celebrations. Uh, this week our our services are uh, as per usual. Okay, church calling this evening. Tuesday and Friday, our morning service is at 6, Wednesday evening, um, Wednesday evening will be at 6.30, okay, um, we've been shifting a little bit back and forth, so I'm making it, um, well, permanent, more or less, so evening, Wednesday evening is 6.30, okay, so please note, 6.30 for Wednesday evenings. <clears throat> now, next Sunday, um, 8 a.m., worship here at the Pro Cathedral. Uh, service of matins, and we are using the collect and the readings for proper 22. Proper 22. This week's bulletins are sponsored by uh, the Maynard family in celebration of their father and husband, Mr. David Maynard, who will, who will be celebrating his birthday tomorrow, Monday 28th. The home circle is wishing him God's richest blessings on this very special day. Our parish family, uh, we offer our congratulations to you and wish you many, many more birthdays to come. So, Brother David, God's blessings. Thank you for the sponsorship. Okay. We enjoy seeing you, so we're going to pray for you to have a birthday next week. Okay. Um, it is the turn of Anglicans to assist at the Outreach Center on, on the Bay Road. Uh, this week, Monday 28th to the 2nd of October. So if any persons, if you have a bit of time this week, uh, we ask that you um, lend a helping hand at the Outreach Center between the hours of 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. We say thanks and continue to say thanks to those who clean and, and help to prepare the church for worship um, each Sunday. So we say thanks to the cleaning team um, yesterday and for those as well who prepare the altar. Thank you very much. A meeting of the vestry takes place on Tuesday, 29th September at 5.30 p.m. at the parish hall. Vestry members, please take note. Something else also happens on Tuesday, the 29th. Anybody remembers? I'm hearing something not too clear. St. Michael and all angels, and what's the significance of that for us? Anybody? Somebody sounds like they have it. Right. So on Tuesday, we celebrate our first anniversary of being a pro cathedral. Yes. Yes. Okay, last year, the 29th of September. We had that service. So, this year, obviously, our one year anniversary. How could you forget our one year anniversary? 
I should put you out of the house. Okay, so please remember to offer a prayer for your church, our church, our pro-cathedral, and by extension our parish, on Tuesday, our first anniversary as a pro-cathedral. Um, I chose not to uh, plan any service, you know, considering the atmosphere. Um, I'm sure persons would love to come out and with all of the restrictions and so on. So I ask us to please remember, let us lift up ourselves in prayer and thank God for um, um, our first year and we look forward for many more. Uh, please remember we are doing a food drive and we accept um, dry food items or canned food items as we um, seek to prepare packages to assist persons in need. Uh, we are going to do our next um, sharing uh, we want to do for Harvest, which is going to be the second Sunday in November. So, the second, third Sunday in November, sorry. Um, so, <clears throat> if we can uh, get some items before then, so we can do some pack, get some packages together that we can give out for Harvest. And then after that, we'll be collecting items that we can give out for Christmas time in December. Okay, so please remember um, to bring along any items that we can use for um, uh, the third Sunday in November. And then our ministry um, called Presence. Uh, I'm going to, hopefully I can get it done by next week. We've started working on it. Now, Facebook is changing some of their um, policies, as it were. And so, for those of you who listen, uh, we, there's a song that we use um, before and after um, presence to introduce it and to close it. Uh, one of the policies that Facebook is changing is that they're not allowing uh, persons to use music that has been copyrighted and all the rest of it. So, I uh, think it's a good opportunity um, for us to launch a nice, friendly competition where I'll be asking persons to compose um, a short song, sort of a chorus-like. Um, the song must um, have the word presence in it. You use the word presence, that's the, the, the topic, the theme. Okay, so the, that, that word must be in it. And um, you compose a nice little song uh, um, that we can use. And we're gonna offer a nice little prize as well. So I'm still putting some things together. Um, but you can start to run it through your mind. Um, you don't have to be um, the best of um, singers. Uh, we are looking for a composition. Okay? Um, if the words and the lyrics and so on are nice and appealing to us and you win, uh, we get a musician who can put some music to it. Okay? So, um, so we have a nice little uh, song. If you're able to do all of that and get the music for it, um, so much the better. Okay, but the emphasis is a bit more on the lyrics. Okay, so if you can write um, a nice little something that we can use to accompany presence, um, that would be greatly appreciated and a reward will be in it. Okay, so I'll try and have that nicely refined for us, um, hopefully by um, next week or at least um, two Sundays the latest. But I've already started to work on it. And um, please remember that um, this year uh, we have vestry elections in December. Please remember to um, stay vigilant, look around, talk and encourage persons. Uh, don't wait until the time comes for us to rush. Okay, thank you for your patient listening. We will now sing our closing hymn from the provincial hymnal number 311, 311.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. A blessed day to all.